there are three, well, there, there are more than three possible configurations for the reduced matrix, but let's think about what each of these three indicates, because uh, what we have, well, let's see. Okay, in this case, and now these asterisks here mean just some number, and one asterisk doesn't have to be equal to the other. It's just there's going to be a number there, there's going to be a number there, there's going to be a number there, there's going to be a number there. And those numbers don't have any uh, particular relation except that that comes out of the original system of equations. So if we do a reduction process and get down to this form, where these question marks could also be asterisk, but in this case we know what the matrix was, so we're able to fill in those numbers. Um, if we get this form where we have 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, then we know that we have x equals whatever number is here, y equals whatever number is here, and z equals whatever number is here. Okay? Now, if we get this, and it's clear that we could get something like this, uh, just as if in the same way that uh, this system of two equations gave us a row of zeros, a system of three equations could end up with a row of zeros. A system of three equations could even end up with two rows of zeros. Okay, the row of zeros is going to occur if this third row is some multiple of the first row added to some multiple of the second row. If that happens, any time that happens, we're going to get a row of zeros. Now, we haven't proven that, but that is what happens. And in your homework, you'll, uh, you'll, you'll see examples where that does occur. Um, so what we get if the system ends up like this is, well, x is equal to some number, y is equal to some number, and it doesn't say anything at all about z. The fact that 0 equals 0, which is what this last equation says, doesn't tell us that z is 0. Z could be anything. If 0x plus 0y plus 0z equals 0 is true for any values of x and y and z. Now, the first equation gave us a value of x, the second equation gave us a value of y, so x and y are restricted, but for that value of x, that value of y, z could still be anything and make this equation true. Now, when I say anything, we're talking about real numbers, so I really mean any real number, okay? But when I say z can have any value, I mean z can take the value of any real number. Okay, so my comment if you end up like this, we have a value for x, we have a value for y. There's no value for z, but there's no restriction on z. These equations are satisfied as long as x has the value it has to have and y has a value it has to have, then any value of z makes it true, so z could have any value. So if x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 2, z could equal... 5, z could equal negative 17, z could equal the square root of pi, z could equal anything, and it would still be so. And we'll see how that works out uh, geomet geometrically in a three-dimensional graph, but we haven't talked much about three-dimensional graphs yet. Uh, that'll be coming up. Okay, uh, here. Uh, in this case, z is again unrestricted. We have no value for z, there's nothing in the equations that we would get here that give us a value for z. So there's no restriction. z could be anything. But x, well, it, this is, case is a little different. We've got a number here and a number here that might not be 0. Okay? Let's assume that these are non-zero numbers. Let's assume that an asterisk, well, let's just assume that these asterisks aren't 0. Uh, if they are both zero, then we have this case. If one of them zero, well, you can think about what that means. Um, okay, so z is unrestricted, but our x and y values depend on z. So, what's that mean? It means x plus some number equals some other number. Okay, but that some number has to be... Uh, I'm sorry, this means x plus some number multiplied by z equals some other number. And this means that y plus some other multiple of z equals some number. Okay? Well, z is unrestricted. z could take any value. So uh, if, if z equals 1, well, that tells us what x has to equal. 
if z, and it also tells us what y is equal to. We pick any value of z, we get values for x and y. Okay? So, you know, what are the implications of that? Well, let's just leave it at this for right now. You could pick any value of z, and the equation that this represents will give you a value for x, and the equation that this row represents will give you a value for y. So for every value of z, there's a value of x and a value of y. Okay. Um, and as it turns out, that's going to be a line in three-dimensional space, but we, we're not dealing with that yet. Okay. Um, now, if you have this case, what's that mean? Well, that means that there's no solution because, remember, this side is just 0x plus 0y plus 0z, which is just 0, and that would have to equal 1. 0 can't equal 1, so there's no solution to this system. And uh, that's all we can say. Okay, well, that's just a little picture of how the matrices for three equations, uh, the augmented matrix for three equations, can end up after a complete row reduction process. And there are other cases, but if you understand what we're saying about these cases, you will be able to figure out um, what's happening with the other cases.